thank you for staying with us. You're still on to the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And right now it's time for our hot topic. So we'll be talking about Governor, Uban, um, Governor Sani um, building three vocational cities in Kaduna to export skills. And joining us to talk about this is Frank Eliaya. He's a technology and media news editor at Business Day. He's on the phone with us. Good morning, Frank. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, good morning. Uh, thank you for having me. And uh, I left a, a business day the other day, so. Ooh, okay, okay. Oh. okay. Well, you should, have, you should have told us because we need to have that updated, but we will now. Okay, but still, right. we're glad that you're Are here. you still in Nigeria, Frank? I am still in Nigeria. I haven't jacked yet. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> because now when you hear that someone leads somewhere, it's Jack what we're thinking mm -hmm. about. So it's good to yeah. still have you here. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, so we're talking about um, Governor Sani building about three cities to, you know, export skills from Kaduna. Um, let's just have your thoughts on that and then we'll go right in. I think it's absolutely um, spot on for the governor to be thinking about uh, um, investments in uh, vocational training. Whether we like it or not, um, we have a, um, a literacy issue in this country. Um, we last last data I think I checked was uh, um, literacy in Nigeria. The rates are um, a little over sixty percent. Okay, and then of course the literacy rate is still at around uh, um, above thirty percent. You know, and uh, in Kaduna State, uh, for instance, I was at uh, 2018, their, lit their literacy rate was 54.6% uh, ish, you know. So, um, there, uh, and then you, you, if you then drill down to what really um, it, um, defines um, literacy, you find that um, there are di um, different variations um, of uh, literacy. You know, and we we haven't gotten there, and I think that it's about time that we start thinking that um, education is exclusive to just the four walls of a university or maybe to the, um, of a primary school classroom or secondary school classroom, or, or a certificate um, even uh, um, to state that as well. Um, we've, we've, we've so much put a lot of stock in certificates um, graduates that is, uh, is affecting us in a very, very um, dire way, you know, and what, uh, uh, which also our leaders not investing enough in in education i i think um the unesco um the court is that we're supposed to invest at least maybe about uh, 20 percent of our 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 budget on uh, education and, and we haven't had, had achieved that for many years now if anything uh, i don't even think we've gone up to maybe 10 percent of our budget in education you know so it's been below um 10 percent but then you um there has been calls that we should start looking at other ways of educating our people you know first of all is um can we start teaching them in our local languages using local languages that's that's one idea that's been out there for a very long time you know which also i think uh, um inspired the whole idea of our, our major education you know but then also um using vocational trainings you know um some people don't necessarily have to go to the university um some people don't necessarily have to you know wear the gowns do matriculation and all of that you know but when you um channel people channel some people um, their energies into vocational trainings and all that, what you find yourself having are technically sound, sound people. You're able to build skills in a lot of people, you know, and they go out there, they make income, they make revenue. They, as in, they still do the things that people who went to university do, you know. So I, I think it's a very, very um, good development, at, at least for Kaduna, it's, it will help them to bridge the gap in education, you know, and it will also help them also um, to reduce um, maybe security challenges that they are having, you know, poverty, poverty have a way of uh, um, building insecurity, 
of course, because when people um, don't have money, don't have what to eat or whatever and all that, and have a lot of time on their hands, they're unemployed, they seem to um, take up to crime. That, that has been the order of the day. And Kaduna has been one of the state's worst hit. In, uh, in 2024 alone, we have seen a lot of um, um, violence, um, mostly in southern Kaduna and other parts of that state, you know. And all of this, all of this is all because um, some people um, uh, um, feel like they're not um, being given a lot of uh, um, attention or some 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 excuses here and there and all that. But education is one way that you can take people out, out of that cycle of poverty. Education is one way you can take them, uh, as in you can get them engaged and they start thinking positive thoughts, um, thoughts that will help that state to move on. And I think other governors should also look towards um, replicating what is um, what is about to happen in in Kaduna. Um, that's my thought so far. Yeah. <clears throat> Sometimes when when we, we think about this, I just also feel what the point will be if uh, somebody gains the skills, for instance, of making shoes uh, that will not be bought by anybody, you know, uh, because we're, we're talking about building skills, build, building um, that demography of people that uh, will have the necessary, necessary skills, but not necessarily going to university and having a certificate and all that. But we're not talking anything about, you know, patronizing Nigerian maid whatever it's going to be. So I, I don't know whether it goes beyond just building centers, but what about the sensitization of people to, uh, to um, one, respect these people, not just because they didn't go to school, but by the fact that they have the skill, and two, to patronize the people when they get the skill and begin to produce whatever they are going to produce. I just use the example of shoes. So somebody will not want to buy an Abba-made shoe, will want to buy Italy, so the Abba-made person will have to... Uh, maybe label it uh, made in Italy and all that. So yeah. doesn't it, doesn't, don't you think it goes beyond just building centers? I think, I think that people are always going to have their preferences when it comes to um, what, what they buy, you know. Um, if, if I don't think a particular um, shoe, let's use shoe again, um, is quality, I'm not gonna buy it just because it was made in Nigeria. I'm gonna buy it because it is quality. I'm looking at the value that you're going to, uh, um, that that shoe is going to give me over a period of time. Do you, so what's do the you really think? Do you really, Frank? Do you really think uh, it's a yes. we should call it a matter of preference or a matter of name? You know, like uh, what will the society say? It, it, so I I I think that I think that what this vocational skill um, sh it does is first of all it gives you it gives you the foundation of of uh, um or it gives you a foot into the door like you can make shoes all right that's that's one good thing about it then it becomes it becomes an additional value if you go beyond that to say i don't just want to make shoes i want to make shoes that people are going to buy now when we go to when, when many of us go to the market i don't think every everybody Everybody goes to the market and start looking for maybe Givenchy, start looking for Louis Vuitton or any of these uh, uh, um, um, foreign brand names and all that. What they're actually just looking for is something that can last over a period of time. Whatever name you give it is not the matter. What is, what is important to them is that can this last me? Is this quality? You know, first of all, I think we should address the issue of quality in our local produce mm -hmm. if we address the issues of quality in our local produce and all that it is easy for us to come to tell our people hey this is working after all i mean look at what's happening with uh, um some some sh um, online shelves you know on instagram and all that most of those things are actually made here in nigeria we're beginning to see bags here made, made in nigeria we're beginning to see tailors um, uh, um in nigeria who are making a lot of great stuff you know, even making shoes, and people are buying them at very high uh, at very high prices. You know, and those shoes are competing with whatever you import from there. But it doesn't stop um, those who want to go outside and go and buy from buying and all that. But when you say 
buy Nigeria or buy made in Nigeria and all that. It is um, it is great, but um, let's be reasonable about it because people are bringing out their hard earned money um, to to get these things and all that. So if you're saying that they should buy something in Nigeria that was made in Nigeria, then you should be able to guarantee them that that thing is quality. That's just that's just the whole idea. Yeah. So well, when yeah, you have well, question, well, there's no there's no argument about that. I just wanted to bring exactly. that out because, for instance, when the senators were trying to buy their 60, uh, 160 million mm -hmm. naira cars. Mm -hmm. They said what they wanted was the name. They didn't even talk about the quality. What they wanted was the name. Because I know that we have a car manufacturer in Nigeria uh, who exactly. is exporting to other countries. And they see the cars as very durable. They are very good. But just because it's made in Nigeria and the name is not what it is, uh, they, they went out to buy from other places. I just brought that up. It's not like it's a big issue. Mm. But the thing is, what are the things... If you were to advise, you would advise the governor uh, to, to put in place. What kind of skills do you think should be in these centers? Because it's one thing to establish a center. It's another thing to have yes. the relevant skills being lent in those centers that will make life meaningful for these people who are going to learn and the society at large. First of all, I don't think that, or I, I would tell the governor not to um, run that center with gov or government appointees, first of all. Because when government runs business in Nigeria, it often don't end well. So the first thing to do, if you have built it, transfer it to those, to private people who can manage it with the requisite skills, with the requisite knowledge, with the requisite experience who can manage it properly and hands off, just provide them all that they need, provide the environment for them to try, for them to make their recruitment, for them to uh, um, go into the communities, you know, provide the security for them and all of that, you know. So that's, that, that's foundational. But if he's going to run it with people, his cronies, people who helped him win elections and all of that, then it is dead on arrival. It means that it's going to be another dead project in Kaduna State. All right. So first of all is who are those going to manage these vocational training centers? When you have the right people fixed in those vocational training centers, then you have solved like 30 percent of the problem. Those people then ha do now have to map out the strategies, the, uh, um, um, the plan that they will that they will need or or that they will deploy into the communities because it has to be round it, it has to be all round so there shouldn't be any form of discrimination it shouldn't be oh those, those people are from southern kaduna and those people are from northern kaduna so we're going to give more preference to maybe to northern kaduna or whatever and all that that would that will only arise when it is governor's friends that are running it because they are only going to take cognizance of the interest of the governor or those who are um, around him you know, but if it gives it to people who are independent, who just wants to do their job and, and, and make it count, then it becomes inclusive. So first of all, secondly, it has to be inclusive. That's the other thing. It has to be inclusive. It has to include everybody. And it has to be merit-based, not cronism. So you're not thinking about... Uh, um, it seems I'm the director of this center. I'm going to bring in all my nephews or my cousins or all my brothers to um, to come learn skills. No, that's what we're talking about here. There has to be there has to be um, a criteria for selection. All right, who are we selecting? And then they have to have a number. Okay, that okay. Um, we have a batch um, or say of 50, 100 people that we're going to, and then. You also have to have a plan for after you have trained them, what next? Are you going to give them a loan to start a business? Are you going to place them in companies around Kaduna State, you know, to, to get the experience um, from what they have learned? You know, so all those things are very, very critical for their success because you're not just churning out people uh, that have skills that's not that should not be the idea if you want to make them exportable then you have to give them the kind of skills that will make them attractive to those who want to 
get them from outside the country. Um, people from outside the country don't just take people with you. If you want to train software engineers, all right, you have to bring in those who, are, who know software very well to train them. Well, because, I mean, you just, you just went right into what I was going to ask was um, the fact that the, the, the governor talked about putting them on the international market as well. Like, they're going to be so employable that people can actually get them. Um, you know, it's going to be a good export. And that was going to be my question. How are we sure... Sorry, come again. Um, my question was, how are we sure that this is going to be a good export for the country? Um, but then, I'm still scared that isn't that going to still bring about the Jaffa syndrome, whereby we're training these people and they have to move abroad. So, what, are, what is the impact of this? Is this going to grow our small businesses here? Because I think that's what we should be looking at. Are they going to grow our small businesses here? And what is going to be the impact of these um, cities that the governor is trying to build? Yes, yeah, so... Two ways to look at it. First of all, is yeah, we need we need them to be part of the local um, workforce um, uh, and and also to help build the local economy in both in Kaduna and also outside Kaduna. Yet, then the other one is that Jakarta for me is really is not a problem. I mean, we have an FX issue right now, and part of that is that even the Nigerians in diaspora are not are no longer willing or are, are hesitant in bringing in um, funds into the country. And of course, we haven't also set up systems that will attract um, investments from these Nigerians living abroad. You know, India has perfected stuff like that. You know, they've got this funding, they've, they've got this uh, program that um, uh, makes their people who are outside India to um, want to invest inside India you know, we haven't got that running yet because we are still thinking, oh, Jakarta is a problem or whatever and all that. Because also the leaders here don't, are not responsible enough to um, to do what they promise to do. All right, so that's one. All right, and then uh, um, talking about um, fueling, um, funneling the uh, the local businesses here and all that it is it is important i think it's important yes they need to be trained and the local businesses here can give them those experiences that they need mm -hmm. it is it is it is absolutely important all right for them to be trained mm -hmm. in that manner but beyond that we need to think globally we need to use them globally would they need to be they do they need to jack really if they are so good if they can be trained so well and given the right experience so so well that from here in Nigeria, they are earning foreign currencies. Mm. And yeah, of course. So they can sit on their desk here at home, wherever they are, and all that. So it will require the kind of technology that you bring to bear. All right. So if you're training them, you're also thinking about how do I put in um, technology infrastructures? What are, what, for instance, what is Kaduna's um, uh, um, strategy for fiber? Uh, are they thinking about how do we uh, uh, yes okay um sadly we have to wrap it up here <laughs> we're a little bit out of time but sadly we have to wrap it up here anyways we want to thank you for coming and just you know bringing these valuable contributions thank you so much congratulations for uh, to your new place of work yes mm. thank you congratulations to you thank you all right, we're speaking to Frank Eliania. He's an economic analyst and senior writer, writer at Tech Cabal. And we've just been talking about the fact that the governor of Kaduna State, Governor Sani, um, Governor Ubasani, had been talking about building cities that will be able to export skills from Nigeria and they can compete um, here and in the international market. So we'll go on a short break. When we return, we'll be looking at our next hot topic. Please stay with us. <laughs>